All right. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming to the class today. And again, it's a privilege. And thank you, ha uh, Chaim and Hani, for um, giving me the space to, to share what uh, I'm very passionate about and want to um, deliver to you guys. And hopefully it helps in different aspects of your own life. Uh, usually I start before learning something to either journal if you have a piece of paper or just to consider what is your intention with learning coming to the class today and wanting to learn something and how it may help you in some area of uh, your life perhaps in school or cha starting a new phase or wanting to look for a relationship whatever the case may be uh, just before I started filming, uh, Rabbi was mentioning the first real kind of mantra we have when we um, are born and we start to learn Torah, which is the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. And one cool, just to uh, share one insight I learned from it recently that uh, will also help introduce the introduction of uh, what I want to uh, learn with you today is that in the Shema, if you look at the prayer book, the ayin in Shema and the Dalet in Echad are larger. And if you put those letters together, you have ayin Dalet Ad, which means witness. So you can, in order to realize that hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and it uses one, everything is one, we can be that witness and observe that. So that's one thing of which we'll, uh, one concept of which we'll get into discussing uh, today. But then also, if you switch those letters around, you have Dalit Ayan, which is Da, which is knowledge. So like um, Rabbi Chaim was talking about uh, belief and faith, I believe it was uh, Or HaTorah or Tor Or, uh, one of the sages of the Rebbeim commented that it's not only just enough to have belief and faith, but knowledge, knowledge of, of Hashem and different practices that help us really um, know what's going on in different situations, or at least know how to respond in different situations. So, as uh, I'm a passionate learner and love listening to different shears, it's, uh, it would it would be well to share a joke to start with. So I heard this awesome um, joke that there's some scientists and it's modern and they feel pretty confident that all the technolo technological advances and everything we've come to, to make in medicine, we don't need God anymore. So they choose one of their head scientists and say, go to God and tell him, God, I don't think we need you anymore. So man goes and speaks to God and says, God, I, I think we're pretty good right here. We got all this great technology. We can pretty much do everything. And, sit, and God listens carefully and patiently and he says, okay, okay, can you, uh, can you heal from this illness? He says, yeah, actually, we, can, we have the technology for this. And he goes on asking him different things. The scientist says, yeah, we can do it. And then finally, the God asks him, all right, can you make man? Can you make a man? And the scientist says, yeah, I, can. I think we can. And God says, okay, show me. And the man bends down and grabs up dirt. And God says, ah, but not with my dirt. So it kind of, I like that story or a little bit of a, a joke, but it also introduces this, um, these we have the technology on one hand and consciousness in our connection with Hashem, which really isn't on one hand or the other, but how do we bring them together and, and unite them and use them in, in, in harmony? So now the main parable um, or the parable of, or there's a parable of which uh, tonight's class I, I really based on. It's my favorite from the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement. And it really dives into uh, what I'd like to uh, continue sharing. But that there's two great men, two tzaddikim, two righteous people, both of which are owners of a jewelry store. And 
the first one, upon he it's late at night, and he hears different creeping and, and crawling going on in his in his house, or his house is jewelry store. And he gets curious and he's listening and he, and he he suspects that it's a thief. So what does he do? By the way, if any of you guys saw the uh, the graphic for um, tonight's class, that's why it has like a picture of my face putting a light on a thief. It's hint, hinting. I didn't put the title just because I wanted to hint at the. That's the, the class, the, the main part. But anyways, what does this first uh, guy do? And by the way, the, the Baal Shem Tov calls him both, that calls this first guy a tzaddik, a righteous person as well. So he suspects that there's a, um, a thief coming in, and upon hearing these different moves, he screams, he shouts, he calls the police, get out of my house, get out of my house. And he accomplishes it, he accomplishes it. the thief leaves, and the, but the police come, but they don't catch him. So it's effective. The thief's gone. His jewelry, everything in his place is safe. But the thief got away. And ultimately, if it's a, a thief that really wants those that diamonds or those jewels, he finds out a new way to get into the house. He come, becomes more clever. He, he thinks through, okay, this guy heard me at this point. How do I avoid that? So then, because it's a parable and things can uh, go this way, the second righteous person also has a, a thief coming into his home and he hears the different creeping and the crawling and he suspects it's a thief. But instead of re reacting and calling the police right away and all this, he listens quietly, he observes what's going on and he sets up traps and ultimately he catches the thief. So it, it's really interesting. On one hand, they both caught the thief. I mean, not caught the thief, but they both saved the diamonds. But in the first case, which is still, like I said, the Baal Shem Tov called it Tzaddik, a righteous person, the thief left, and, but can ultimately return. Whereas the second one, he, he catches it him, and he can either go over to the police, or as I'll share towards the end, another ending. What does this represent in, in all of us? Is inside, in, in our own lives, we have different thieves personally, that try and prevent us from li living our best life or accomplishing the things that we want to accomplish, not for our own egotistical reasons, but also because it's what Hashem, what God wants for us. So it's the different self-doubts, different worries, different things that even when we're aware of them, we catch them. No, I don't want to do that. Like, let's say somebody is on a, a diet and they come and they see the cake or whatever the thing is. No, I don't want to eat that. And they, they push it away, they ultimately don't eat it. But the thief in their own life can return at any point. And especially when, you know, when sometimes we're feeling tired, we had a long day and whatever the case may be, when I think everybody can understand that, that's when that thief can come in and fool us and get past our awareness. So how, so the main question uh, that I wanted to prevent, prevent, present to you guys is how can we become aware, like the second Sadiq, of, of what I'm unconsciously reacting to and learn how to approach it with this second, more calm, more observed, not in a threatened way. And just a cool thing is that the Baal Shem Tov mentions that they're both great men, they're both tzaddikim. And in uh, Yeshaya and Isaiah, um, I believe it's chapter 60, 21, it says, your nation are all tzaddikim. So perhaps it's a commenting on that and that we're all, we're all already righteous people. We all have this potential inside of us to, to respond to that thief. Again, I put the quotations because that can have, the th word thief can have negative connotation. And I just want to look at the main definition as, as something that's taking away the diamonds, which is or the diamonds or whatever the jewels are, which is our um, our, our our connection our, with our Shem and uh, the things that are dear to us, and really return and, and to return to the part of us that is already at tzaddik, already righteous. So again, the main question: How could I, how can I become aware of? 
the different ways that the thief can show up so that I can catch him and ultimately transform it. So <clears throat> that's the first part. I think everybody, everybody good? What's our question? So, but in order to build now uh, an understanding, we, have to, we need to start with the foundation, which is the model of understanding, um, that which we can build on, like I mentioned. And that is always identity. Who, who are we? Who am I? Like I just touched upon, we're all uh, in, to, in our deepest part of our soul, our essence. We are uh, a, a Siddiquim in a sense, a, a righteous, a, we all are a soul. As you learn in the Tanya, which is the, the seminal work from the, um, from the, uh, the Altar Rebbe, the, the Rabbi Shneer Zaman of Liadi, his first, um, his main work, and has actually, we're on a cycle right now, we just finished chapter five today. He talks about how we are all each, uh, we have a literal piece of God within, within inside of us. So, in a, if I can tap into that, that'll help us respond to different situations. But if, honest, if in, our, in our media and a lot of different things that we are uh, and taught and learned today, hey, welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. If, if I am, often we hear different things, you know, to, with identity, whether it's politics or even sports, whatever the case may be, we are taught or perhaps we interpret it incorrectly to identify as that. If I am what I do, if I am a jewelry owner and something is threatening that of which I am, or I am an athlete and I got an injury and that's threatening my ability to play, then I'm gonna react to the things that, that shatter that. Even if, I'm, even if I am identifying as, um, often you, you hear people, especially like have different clients to work with, uh, and your psychologist, you know, somebody may come in and say, man, I am so anxious. I am so fearful. On, on one level, if the person is a, aware of that, that's okay. But on a subconscious level, when we say I am, our brain is very powerful, that it takes that in. And so if I say I am anxious, I'm going to resist, even on a subtle level, anything that would make me feel calm. So we have to get beyond, okay, I'm not the things that I do. I'm not even the, the, the thoughts that I constantly think. You know, Throughout a day, we have, I think it's 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. And 90, I believe 90%, if I remember correctly, 90% of them are the same thoughts. And there was also a science statistic that shows by the age of, by the age of 35, 95% of our, our habits are the routine, the same things throughout the day. So in order to change something in our, in our life, we have to think differently. You know, like one of the um, main teachings we, you hear often from the, the Rebbe is think good and it will feel good. How do you say it in, in Yiddish? Thank you. Think well. He it, it think good and it will be good. Uh, there's a little. There's a lot more. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a lot more to unpack there. I think also like with the the law of attraction. You hear, it's it's more than just thinking, because you really have to embody it. Because if somebody's saying, but the, the more and more you rehearse it, that's how you can uh, begin to really feel uh, whole. Um, but where, where I was uh, returned back to, you know, I'm not the things, I am not identified with the things that I do, nor with the feelings that I feel or the thoughts that continuously rise. Because sometimes in a day we have beautiful, you know, thoughts that we'd, are pl that are pleasant. Thoughts that we, okay, I, I like that. You know, it's a, maybe a, uh, a thought of, man, I just absolutely loved spending time with Rabbi Chaim. Like, that's pleasant. But there's also thoughts that we have some, <laughs> there's also sometimes the thoughts, and I can attest to this after spending uh, 10 days in a silent meditation retreat a couple of years ago, when the mind gets bored or you're just not feeling well, 
the thoughts that arise are not so pleasant and you'd rather not have those. So we can also see I am not the thoughts. I'm not identified by the thoughts that I think. So now we can go a little bit deeper and also uh, I'll quote a um, teaching you may have heard from King Solomon. Of course, I have to, got to ref, uh, refer to my namesake Und here. Underscore. Or underscore, the original. The original. <laughs> but, you know, he First. says, he says, this too shall pass. And what is this, what could, what is one thing that this could be referring to? Is those situations in our life which are uncomfortable when the, th the thief, uh, like I mentioned, shows up and we can realize, okay, this this isn't, you know, that's the way that I'm feeling right now. It's really unpleasant or the situation I'm in in my life. It's highly unpleasant. Again, I highlight that word unpleasant because as I'll touch on later, I'm not calling it bad. I'm not calling it something that on a level, on a, um, a, a subtle level or higher or greater, I'm resisting it in any way because then the resistance what you resist persists, you may have heard. So the things that I'm resisting are actually coming back in. So similar like with this parable we're talking about, this first tzaddik, he screams, he's resisting. He doesn't want the thief there, That's, which is uh, understandable. I don't think any of us want that. But the way to really transform and capture it is not to push it away and scream and, and react, but to listen and, and observe. And <clears throat> to return a little bit to um, the part of uh, how the, the, the Balatanya, the Rabbi Shneur Zaman of Liadi, talks about how we are each a chelak elokai mimal mamish. It says we are, each, we are a, a piece of God, literally. But there's also a teaching from the Baal Shem Tov that when he taught, and this is in Keser Shem Tov, when you grasp a part of the essence, you grasp the essence in its eternity. So, because you can't split up eternity, eternity is eternity. So we all have that really deep within us. And that's also commenting on when it says, God, um, man is made in the image of God. God doesn't change, but it's infinity, excuse me. So it's something beyond all of the, the, the physicality, the, the thoughts and think those are expressions of who we are. One of the major shifts I uh, experienced in my own life, transitioning from playing basketball in college, is that it's I'm not the basketball player. That was an expression of who I are, who I am. Excuse me. So then, these to return again to the parable, the thief can show up in different ways whether it's ways that we're feeling and that'll re respond to uh, not being so aware of the different thoughts that lead us to make decisions or actions that we don't necessarily want to make depending on the uh, our, our visions that we have or Hashem has for us or the different um, goals we have let's say health goals relationship whatever it may be to be to begin to to begin to um, uproot those uh, subconscious behaviors, the things that um, show up that create that lead to those actions, we have to be able to become familiar with it, familiar with them. And throughout a day, like I mentioned with all the hundred, several thousands of thoughts, we also have so many things that we can place our attention on in any given moment, there's like a billion stimuli. We have, you know, visual. I'm looking at you guys right now. There's different sounds going on. You're hearing me speak. We're feeling different things constantly. Our bodies and our minds are picking up so much information. So how is it if I want to improve an area of my life and I want to catch the thief and, you know, become healthier, have a relationship, get a new job or a new raise or approach my schoolwork in, in a uh, more excited, less stressed way, which also physiologically, when we are not stressed but relaxed and we, we loosen our grip on the different things, we also perform at our best, which 
to me is, is amazing. When I'm, when I'm actually relaxing the most, that's when I'm going to, to perform the best. So one of the best tools of which I learned that I now want to talk about and one of the key parts of it to highlight from that second sadik of how he ca catches this uh, thief is meditation. If in the morning or sometime during the day, you're taking some time in quiet or listening to a little bit of music and we'll get to uh, later this evening. And instead of going straight to your uh, phone or going straight to eat or going straight to whatever it may be or even straight to work or even to exercise for that matter and I take time to disconnect, close my eyes, listen to just getting quiet and even before I like to do before, before prayers, before davening, then I can, I can close out the amount of information that's coming in and I can place attention on my inner world and begin to start this new, new, um, new uh, habit, new um, obser observation of what's going on and also begin to rehearse because we have to, to become aware of, let's look at the, the parable the guy, the, let's say the first guy, let's say he becomes aware that, you know, the thief did this and I reacted this way and I don't want him to get away next time. Rehearsing, also in the, in the meditation after getting present, what am I going to do in the situation next time it arises? How am I going to react next time I get cut off on the way to work or somebody screams at me? Instead of fighting it back, if I'm aware of it, that's the first part. And, and there's many different uh, teachings and from different teachers. Once you're aware of something, you're already 50%, more than 50% solved the problem. And that's what's beautiful about the meditation in my experience and from learning is that you can actually begin to rehearse that. You don't have to actually have that um, experience or circumstance in the physical world per se to begin to practice that. You can rehearse it. Why is that so? Because when you get really present, and anybody here have experiences of when they're just completely immersed in the moment, maybe through uh, dancing or sports or even writing something. Anybody want to share anything? If you, something that comes to mind, that kind of moment, you're just so in it. You're not thinking about anything. You're just so present. No, nothing comes to mind. Reading a book. Reading a book. Yeah. Yeah. Just like 